Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Been a long time coming. It was kickstarted. It was, and I joined it after we we had the uh, live show with uh, Stuart Stuart McCockadale. Yeah, from Great Escape Games, and we we chatted with him. And while we were on the show, I signed up for it. It's an excellent decision, and I it's... didn't because I knew that you would. <laughs> um, but also, like as a reviewer. Kickstarters come with bonus things. They do. So, and, uh, you know, and it's not always clear which bits will come in the start. So, so th this is the retail version of Dead Man's Hand Reader. So if you go to our website, for example, uh, to purchase this or, you know, and, and yeah. Whaling Games or affiliate links or whoever else, this is the current retail version of the game. Not to, if you just grab there, Mike, last year's version or 18 months ago's version, was this, and this was a fantastic set. It's a really good little set. But the big thing that they've done is they've they've moved into the plastic scenery space, and obviously the weight and the cost of this box has gone up quite a bit. I think at time of recording this retails for £90. We'll check that, and I'll put the price up there for you to look at. What comes in this beautiful box, so, cowboy? I don't know, is it Redux or Redo? I've heard it both. I call it Redux. So, three Dead Man's Hand Main Street buildings, one set of boardwalks, one set of street scatter, ten plastic male gunfighters, five plastic female gunfighters, rule books, card decks, markers, and dice. So, this is already hitting the criteria I say, like at the very best starter sets include scenery because scenery transports you to the place. Even if it's just a little bit, they really flavour it. So we'll toss the sprues out and then we'll talk about them in a bit more detail. And I'll show them the hors d'oeuvres tray that they're presented with, Mike. If yeah. you open up. Whoop. There you go. There's quite a lot of stuff in here. Model sprues. Dudes and do that. Instructions. I actually, in everything, when you buy something from Great Escape Games, you get a little bookmark. Yeah, bookmark. Um, I use it for quite a few of the rule books. Turn cards, nice solid D10s and D20s. Oh, that is quite nice, high quality dice, yeah. Uh, I'll let you unpack that and then you can just feel the weight of these. All of these different sprues. <coughs> well, we'll, we'll, um, we'll unpack them as we go, I think. Otherwise so, bits if, if you're familiar, familiar with either version 1 or version 2, well, mm. well it's version 1.1 because they went from metal figures to the plastic cowboys. The tokens are still the same. And then you get the new rule book. Is it a new rule book? It's a new rule book with, most of the rules are the same. Some of the cards have been rewritten. Mm -hmm. Some of the games have been revised. Right, so it's like a balance change. Yeah. Right. It's, it's almost like where the, the, um, the erratas have been done and- Yeah. So, like, the game the community was playing is now reflected in the rules that you buy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and right. the, the campaign rules have been revised as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're a little bit simpler and they work better. Okay. And um, one of the things I haven't tried yet is you can have stampedes. <laughs> you can have stampeding cattle? Yep. Okay. And um, presentation-wise, it looks really nice. Let me just have a look at some of that. So, as you look through it... It's full colour. I'm not sure if the old one was black and white or mostly black and white, but it's it's nice. There was, there, it's it was the clean. sepia tone, uh, but the photographs yeah. were really, really nice. Great, great inspiration photographs there for when you're doing your modelling. Yeah, um, yeah. But a lot of photographs now of their own kits and their own models, about like line of sight rules and so forth. You also got a breakdown of the rules on the cards, which is quite important for old men like me. Yeah is that you can't always read the card. <laughs> you might want a larger print version of that. Um, so it tells you in here what they all do. Also actually gives you a little hint on when to play them. If you read through the card decks, it it's, gives you an idea of when it's best to play them if you're, not uns if you're unsure. Oh, right. So, so it gives you right, some so hints. Right, a kind of a starting point. And how, how good is that? Because you've played this game quite a lot. I have, yes. Um, is that good advice that it provides in there? 
It, it does. Because um, often, I'm not being rude or anything, but often designers can't per- perceive how people will go on to play their game. Um, and sometimes those kind of starting tips or whatever are actually really bad advice for how to play a game. In most of them, it it gives you the, the simplest situation where you should be using it. You right. know, yeah. you're about to be shot, you've got three wounds, get out of the way. Yeah. You know, use this card. Or you've you've got a really guaranteed shot, use this card, you're going to kill the You're going to re- really do right. some serious damage to yeah. the guy. Yeah, you're going to push up the... Yeah, okay. Makes sense. A little, little bit of a, a side that I do like is uh, through the book, there's some little colour adverts. Um, you want to show them to them, not me, yeah. Mike. So there, there's little adverts like you would find in the Old West leaflets. Oh, in the style of? And the names Snake are actually, Mike Medicine? Yeah. Is the it? names are actually people that were in the, 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 so the first adopters oh, of the, the Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So some of those have been nice. honoured by adverts. Right. Nice. Uh, Token set, you mentioned it briefly. Um, this is your only measuring tool that you need, is that right? It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and these are just kind of status effects, but it's good, high quality cardstock. It's two mil by the looks of things. It's good there in there. You mentioned the bookmarks. Full color destructions for your buildings. Yep. That's nice because I mean, Great Escape Games is not a massive company like Games Workshop or Warlord. So normally, you often don't get instructions, let alone like full color ones. Yep. Um, because of their modular building system. We're going to talk more about that when we when we get to that. Yep. Uh, the dice here... D20 is, is a hit dice system, and you... A 19 or a 20, the other guy's out of the game. Yeah. And uh, 11 up to 18, you put hit markers on. you got a hit marker. Yeah. It, Cost you, you it's minus one to shoot when you're shooting yeah, back. Yeah, you're kind of stunned or whatever. Yeah, you get three or four hit markers depending on the character you're out of the game. You can you get three actions in a turn each character. Yeah, and you have to declare them at the beginning. So, right, I'm going to move, move, shoot. Yeah, and you do those actions, yeah. and then depending on how far you've moved, puts modifiers on you. Yeah. On the other person. Yeah, it's one of those games that tracks how much I moved and how much they moved is affecting the, is That's affecting correct. the hit chance. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I mean, we're not going to go through the details of the rules today. Yeah. Um, I mean, among other things, Dead Man's Hand is a pretty established game now. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very, very successful game. But this... Oh... <laughs> I thought we were going to get full-size cards in this because my old man eyes, they're lovely at these cards. And these cards are both cards in your hand that you can play and turn sequence. It's yeah. a dual roll deck. And I thought, because I saw the card before we opened this box, now this is beautifully presented. The minor snag with this is... I, I can't, I'd need read my reading glasses for that and I wouldn't normally be wearing them at table. But it is all duplicated in the rule book. And you quickly know what it does when you play it a lot, right? The, the, the key point of it is, is at the start of the turn, you've got three cowboys, I've got three cowboys. You draw, you draw a card from the deck mm-hmm. and you can look at that one and you put it down for each card. And you allocate a card to each, each character mm. and their number tells you their initiative order. Yeah. So in this version, you put the card down next to the player. Yeah. In the Kickstarters, they did a, a different system where you get large cards. Right. And then you get a token with the with the playing card symbol on it. So you draw the large card, which is yeah. two of spades. You then take the small token. But because these have got to go on the table next to your character. Right. And it's and and that's one of the reasons they need to stay small. Yeah, is you're going to have many of these on the table, and they're they're face down as well. So it's kind of important exactly where they are. It's not like we all know where they are. Yes, we don't know what they are until they're revealed. So they're going to live on the table. I I, I understand completely why I yeah. played the game, and there are a lot of cards on the table why they need to be small. Um, but I would have liked a, a larger print version. I mean, they are quite readable. They are beautiful. And these seem nicer than the previous ones. They're better cards and they've They're got a better, better back on them. And if you take them all out of the box... Well, they might go everywhere then. Yeah, they might not go the back in. Oh, look at that! <laughs> there we go. 
stuff like that. I'm glad you mentioned that because so it's, it's sort of um, it's a it's like a production quality thing, yeah. isn't it? It's a real mark of it. And these go back in there, so they're not. You're not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> you're mostly gonna be able to keep them intact. All right. Yeah. Look, this the, these are the rules. This is not the strongest point about this new set. What's fantastic about this new set? Is all the plastic. Is the, is, the, is the amount and the weight of the plastic. We're going to be super quickly talk about the cowboys and the cowgirls because these have been out for a little while. So let's take these out. You've got 15 people, 10 boys, 5 girls. The boy cowboy sprue is probably one of the things that propelled um, dead man's hand forward, wasn't it? They've yeah. got a lovely range of metal figures. Isn't it? They're very nice and very stylized. But these multi part cowboys, where you've got, you know, the, the trench coat stroke duster, guy in a jacket, guy in a shirt, mix and match, different weapon options, different arm options, and many heads. Yeah, you've got Stetson, you've got the uh, stovepipe, you've even got the guy with the cloth sack over his head. Yeah. I've actually used the um, cavalry hat on one of my American Airborne for bolt action. Oh, right, right. <laughs> he's like that. He's that sergeant he, or that he, lieutenant. He, yeah. 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 So you've got five figures on a sprue. Yeah. Five different bases, five different torsos. Yeah. Ten different heads, lots of different gun weapon choices. But um, it, it's like one of each. There's one shotgun, there's one repeater, there's one rifle. Is it not that? There's, there's, there's several of each. There's at least oh, two yeah. shotguns. I can see. A... Oh yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Now, now I come to look at it. Uh, and then uh, there's sticks of dynamite. There's a cow horn skull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you've got holstered pistols that you can put on the on the sides of them. Yeah, it's a great sprue. I, I mean, a lot of people have seen this a lot. You got those standard are these Renedra that look like Renedra. They're, 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 they say Great Escape games on them though. Yeah. Um, so Twenty five mil, own. no no lip. The ladies is an, is newer. That was last year yes. again, I think. Came out in plastic. Fantastic. No, these are not compatible with the men. Incorrect. There are. You have to. You have to take a few bodies off. Mm -hmm. But there are some torsos and. Uh, what, apparently, you can put the duster on one of the on one of the lady bodies. Yeah. Well, that's probably coincidental because they, they they look when they. I remember Stuart saying when he made these. No, I'm, we're making figures that are shaped like women, yeah. not like men. You know, they, they are different shape. Um, so although there may be some overlap, there was no attempt to make yeah. them compatible uh, per se. But yeah, I can see like the one in the trousers, the, the, the duster might fit over, possibly yeah. depending on how it is. And that's different because I guess a lot the back might not, the, the body yeah. might not fit, but it's all hidden behind the coat. Yeah. So you wouldn't know. Um, but again, it's it, it's similar, and these again, like those, they're, they're so Midwest, aren't they? You know, I, I love the hem on this skirt, for they're, example. They're one of one of the, the there's the you've got various hats and that, but then there's the the crazy old lady head, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 and uh, and those kind they, of things come at you with a shotgun. Um, again, these have been out for a yeah. while. You can buy them. Uh, you can you can buy more of these. Uh, if you yeah. want, I think they come in sets of 15 or 20 sprues. But what was new for this and why it was kickstarted was the scenery. And if you want to play with cowboys, you need you, you need your Midwest town. You need yeah. your boardwalks, your mud, your hitching posts. And so, the banks are up. Yeah. So, scatter terrain. Scatter terrain. Suitcases. Travelling trunks, barrels, milk churn, uh, where is it, the crate of beers, bottles. Crate, the, the mostly consumed crate of beer. And you've, yep. got, you've got a couple of loose bottles around as well. Mm -hmm. the, the axe and the chopping block, some mealy bags. Nice. So all this is totally suitable for a Midwest setting. But a lot of it is suitable for a number of other. I mean, this is anything that's kind of 1850s to 1890s 
This is the stuff that people used when they travelled, right? And the boxes are going even even yeah. in, in even the later periods. The obligatory um, coach wheel as well, yeah. of course. Ooh, nice big and small barrels. Yeah, I, lo I love these big trunks as well. Fantastic. You gonna get yeah. one of these? One of those. But it's, it's a nice bit of scenery. You've which got you can really accent the accent the board. You've got some, you've got some painted examples here. They're in progress because I haven't. Yeah. yeah. Or some part painting ones, yeah. so then milk churn and a bottle. And you've based yours, and I, I think that that's probably a good idea, basing them because you're going to have a lot of bits of scatter, and especially you're going to put these things inside the buildings, which we'll come to in a minute. If they're all loose, they're all going to be rattling around while you're trying to move your miniatures around. Whereas if it's a big, if you base them, it's it's just easier to form them into a barricade or whatever else it is you want to do. So I think that that's and really nice. One of the things with the the game is that there's there's behind hard cover and then there's concealed. Yeah. If there's anything in the way that could have it could deflect a bullet. Yeah. You can get some benefit from it. So in some ways, by having the base, the base defines the, the yeah, obstruction it's like rather an area terrain yeah. thing. If you want to go down that route, yeah, definitely. All right. So you get one of those sprues. Yeah. That's very nice. I think every twenty eight mil gamer would enjoy this sprue. Yeah. Kind of use for it. All right. So the boardwalks are more scatter. Mm. So the boardwalks go in front and connect the buildings. So you, you, you so you're not walking front, in there. down down the side. Yeah. yeah, because there's no roads. Yeah, like this stuff. It's all churn. Everybody is is driving cattle through town. Yeah. Is riding horses through town. That space in between is is all but a quagmire in the in the wet and, right? and other things. <laughs> And and a lot of equine manure yeah. among other. And I haven't brought it, but I've even, I've even made with one of the buckets. I've made some green stuff into some brown stuff. Right, right, um, right. So you've got the boardwalks that go in front of the buildings, and then they can connect the buildings. You've got some steps up to them. More scatter terrain. You've got your trough and hitching posts. Yeah, which you've got over here. Which is which is nice, and again, it's an iconic bit of cowboy yeah. furniture, right? And you get a saddle. Some buckets, and so yeah. So the boardwalks go in front of the buildings. Yeah, and again, it's very Midwest. And in doing this in hard plastic rather than MDF, you're able to have these irregular edges. You've got all this etching and texture, which is really going to take a dry brush. Really like this stuff. But you just bear with me while I get out the parts for one building because we've got three. Oops. Gosh, yeah, the frame can't hold the roof. <laughs> right. the, the, the instructions are nice in colour, so you've got a base plate. Per building. Yep. And, and then this you've is got also your ceiling. Yep, because it's the ground floor of the upper building if you've got a two-storey building. Yeah. So you've got a floor and a ceiling on one sprue, yep. or a floor and the floor above. And then so you've got your front door, bit part, and your back wall. Mm -hmm. and a mid wall that you can put in in different ways and the doors an interior wall yes. you're talking about there yeah and the the doors have got a hinge system on them yeah. point of note the hinge side the pins are very very close to the sprue if you cut too ca um, carefully the door will just keep falling out of the the, the, the the retention right so cut carefully Yes, but but it is possible to cut them in such a way as the door will, will open and close. Will yeah. remain, yeah, yeah, will remain mobile because so you, you, it, it is pinned and the door frame has got a socket. Is this the door frame? Yep, above the door. As you can see, you've got the little piece where the two toggles fit in. Yeah, and the same on the door. So you've got your front wall and your back wall, and these have got a key slot. Ah, uh, right, the keying is in the wall panels, yeah, and I can yep. now see, so the, the long side walls, and then, they, so again, it's like a tongue and groove system, yep. isn't it, the way that they key in, so the side walls plug in to the front yep. and back piece, very quickly giving you structure. So there's three pins at the bottom of the front and back, which go into the three slots. Into the floor, so you put your front and back wall in, and they're pinned into the floor. You put your front wall in, your two side walls in, then your back wall. Do you? Yep, because the slots are at both ends. Yep. Yeah. So but put one, one end wall on, two side walls, then put the back wall in. Okay. And then that's... That seems harder to do to me, but okay. It, You've done it, I yeah. haven't. 
Yeah, all right. Which, and then that's that's the ground floor front and back done. Yeah. You then take this sprue and then the second plate will fit on top again. Both sides are grooved. So that slots into the top of the front and back and to the size to yeah. form the upper part of the building. All right, so the, so this is again, the floor is also, is also the ceiling. Yeah. And then you're gonna make that sloped cavity. Yeah, so on the wood side up, yeah. You've got the two beveled sides there. Which is giving you your slope. Yeah. And your your headboard. Giving you your saloon sign yeah. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. And then the tiled piece. Yep. Yeah. So this is this is exactly like again the texture to this. And yeah. but it's also it's a really substantial piece That's of a heavy plastic. Piece. Yeah, you can't, you can't these sprue gates it. are not slim, and it, do, it it is very heavy. This piece yeah. for a lump of plastic. Um, so that then goes on at an angle. Yeah. And um, yeah, and again, we can see we've got some keying here. How it's yeah. going to fit into those slopes. So it's all going to easily dry fit in yeah. before you glue it. And for some buildings, what I've done is I've just glued the slot side bits onto that, mm -hmm. so that I've I've got a flat roof, or I can have the slope roof. So, oh, right. You can have this as a flat roof. Yeah. So you just have that, that tile there. You don't put this piece on. Right. You can have a flat roof. But if you glue these pieces to the tile, mm. and then you just drop that on, like you drop the first the roof yeah. onto the, the other part. So it's, it's modular. In that respect. And you get three of these. You get three of these buildings. Which you could use to build a single three-story house. Yeah. But you don't get any stairs in this kit. Yeah. Uh, and then to finish off the basic one, we've got a porch. So we've got another tile piece and three support legs. And these verandas fit perfectly with the boardwalks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, you can yeah, see so there. They're going to they're gonna fit as a, can, as a canopy um, and, covering and this, it. this is where we go Blue Peter. <laughs> this is where we go Blue Peter. Okay. So here's part painted. Yeah. You're getting it, but... Here's here's one that's fully assembled and ready to go. So immediately, I mean, I've seen you, some of the foreground ones; they're really nice. But but this has just got a depth and a texture to it, you know. And you can just feel it. I know you haven't reached that stage yet, but it's going to take washes and dry brushing. I've only used really. That's well. only speed paint at the moment, yeah. just as the to get the colours, and then you take the roof off. And I've used two internal walls because this is my bank. And, that, and that's what some of these are, you can that's use. That's that piece, yeah. That's that piece there. Yeah. And as you can see, if you take the, uh, that door there moves, that one's that one I cut, that's the one I cut the pins off of. Right, right. So it's glued in place. Yeah, you made your first mistake yeah. and you learned by the second one. And the front door opens and closes as well. Yeah, and it's not like it opens one way and falls off the other way when we turn it. Yeah. I'm just trying that, which is good. Yeah. Um, uh, now the internal flooring here—that's you, you just put that in, right? You've I, I I sourced some floor tile patterns on on the internet, printed them out, and then I've just put some sticky back plastic over the top of them yeah. to make the lino look. But the plain floor is floorboard textured. Yeah, it has. It, it's this. Yeah, it's this this very textured yeah. floor, which is fine. But because this you're planning to make into a bank, yeah, you wanted it to have some flooring. Yes, so this would be a bit more of a prestige building. Um, so great. I'm just the weight of this roof uh, for what it is it could almost be made out of resin. You know, but it gives it a real feeling of quality. Yeah. But look at the fit. You know, it's yeah. There's you've got front and back keying and side keying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, remember that the, the plate, if you take the roof off again, the, that, that plate here is the same as that one. So when you build a two story building, the, the two roof, will, yeah, it the locks roof still in. fits. Absolutely. And on the two story building, you get a, a veranda mm -hmm. and a set of side stairs. And but they don't come in this yeah. kit. But there are other sprues available for this system which develop it. And one of the things that when we had Stuart on the live show a few months ago, they were saying, you know, they're looking at making wider buildings. Wider yeah. buildings on parts that allow you to double width these buildings for things like, you know, the for like the saloon and those those yeah. bigger things. I mean, we suggested 
brothel, I think, was there. Uh, the bro church or brothel yeah. should be a dual kit. It's like you can turn yeah. it into one or the other. I found that, that, uh, <laughs> that, that was the way that we see the world, maybe. Yeah, um, and on this one, I've used some, some toothpicks to put bars on. Uh, right, you've, you've yeah, back here, because you said this is the strong room in yeah. there. Yeah. So, okay. same if you're making the, the sheriff. You yeah. know, it's yeah. various bits and pieces. There is a... And you get three of them. You get three of those. In this set. Um, if, if you want to see more, um, there is a thing called Dead Man's Hand Official on the Facebook. The rest of the sprue in here is, is just more of those sprues that we just yeah. looked at, so right? The same... Two more for uh, two more sets of buildings. Yeah. So you've got one set of walkways, one set of sp scatter sprue, and the three buildings. Yeah. Plus the guys, the, the girls, the cards, the tokens, the rules, new rule set. I uh, really like the boardwalks. And you've got three buildings and you're going to have four boardwalks. So yeah, you're not, you only needed one of these. I was just wanting to make sure that it yeah. all kind of fitted in. This. Uh, it's not a cheap set, it, you know, let, let, let's not pretend, but if you were buying these things separately, I can't imagine you'd get this building for less than 25 quid. There's definitely 20 quid worth of soldiers, so the plastic alone is worth more than the money. Updated set of the rules. The dice are not cheap, and in a lot of starter sets the dice are really, really cheap. There was a little bit of weight to it. I'm not saying they're like premium, like, you know, um, metal dice or anything, but they're not cheap. Everything about this set has got a pretty high kind of quality um, associated right down to the co full color instructions yeah. with high quality images. I'm really impressed with this. Obviously buying it today, you'll be a bit gutted that you didn't kickstart and get a few little bonus extra yep, bits, yep. but it's still fantastic value for what it is. And if you want to play a cowboy game, the rules were basically free. Yeah, so even if you want to play a different cowboy game, I think this is still a great set. Even if you're not playing Dead Man's Hand, you're playing something else. And just uh, on Great Escape Games, you can go and just buy the rule book. You get the rule book, the tokens, and the cards if you've yeah. got the older sets. Yeah, and you want to just upgrade that, but yeah. you, you got to buy the buildings. I've and they sell them, but you can buy buildings yeah. separately and you can buy different upgrades for or whatever. Yeah, look, mate, I'm re really pleased with this. Really pleased with what. De what great escape games have been able to do with Dead Man's Hand. When you think about it, like 10 years ago, there's basically no cowboy games in the public domain. There's now several. The Lardies have just released their What a Cowboy, or they're just finishing it or whatever. There's a real appetite. There's clearly always been an appetite in this space, but they're at the front of producing good quality models, yeah. good quality scenery, and they're a great company. I'm yeah. I'm I really like them. All right. I was our views. Thank you for hey. watching. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.